Okay, in this video, we're going to be talking about the most powerful ICT turtle soup entry. Okay, now when I say the most powerful, I, all I can go off of is my personal findings. Okay, I go off my personal discoveries and what I have found to be the highest probability, the best setups. And I'm going to be giving it to you right here on a platter. Okay, what I'm going to give you in this video more than most gurus are going to give you entire courses. They'll string you along an entire course and not teach you anything useful. Just And you'll just end up being more confused. And when you started, I'm going to give you a very simple, practical thing to look for. And I want you to go in and study it for yourself. I want you to go in and test it for yourself. Okay? And I'm very sure you're going to be pleasantly pleased with what you find. Okay? Very simple stuff. All right, number one, here's the deal. You want to see an old high or an old low nested inside of an imbalance, okay? So for example, we have this right here. You see how this old daily high right here is nested inside of this daily bullish imbalance? Look, one, two, three. Three candles make a fair value gap, of course. And if you are not sure what a fair value gap is, I'm not going to go into all what that is in this video. I have a video on that already. I'll even link it in the video description below. In the video description below, if you don't know what a fair value gap is, watch the video that I'm going to have linked on fair value gaps and that'll cover it, okay? But we're not going to go into all that in this video in all detail, right? So we, have the fair, we want to see a fair value gap and we want to see this old hot nested inside the fair value gap, okay? Whenever you have something like this, that level becomes very, very sensitive going forward when it's inside of an imbalance. I know most people that kind of learn within the ICT community don't subscribe to basic support and resistance, but you know, ICT's touched upon this as well. And he's talked about, you know, whenever you have levels like this, like they become more sensitive. Like it's, I'm not introducing anything that's new. I'm not trying to create anything that's new. It's stuff that he's already talked about. Okay. When you have it inside of an imbalance like this, it's sensitive. It's amplified. Okay. Like it, it's telling you it didn't respect that level. And it's now going to be a level of support going forward that you want to keep a very close eye on. So then we have our imbalance right here, which I will mark up. So that's number one though. Like you, like you want the higher time frame point of interest to base these turtle soups off of those are going to be the highest probability. Everything, you know, the highest pro probability deals are going to be like based around these higher time frame levels. You want a higher time frame level. So you have a higher time frame level right there. You got the imbalance right there. And I'm not saying the old high or old low has to be on the daily. It can be on a four hour too. I'm just using this because this is a good example that I had from Friday. All right. Now it actually didn't test that level, but we're going to go into that here in a moment. And another way that you can approach this, because the thing is like, if you're trading turtle soup for a buy setup, that is and you're buying weakness. And if you're trading a turtle suit for a short, you're going to be selling into strength. That's the thing. Like you're, you're literally, you know, what some people would call catching a fallen knife you're doing with a turtle soup. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, people say, don't try to catch fallen knives. Always wait for it to confirm. You don't got to like, like it, but it needs a reason to move, right? You're not just, you know, when you're doing turtle soups, like you're not just going in and saying, oh, this thing looks cheap or this thing looks expensive. Let's just go short. Let's just buy. No, there's a reason for it to be doing that, which makes it okay. Okay, that makes it okay. Like, not to go too much off track here, but just to kind of tell you the why, because you know, somebody something might be saying, but okay, how do we know though? Because I became a millionaire doing it. Like, whenever I was trading stocks, that's what I did. Like, I I would buy weakness, and I that's just that's how I operated. I didn't wait for a shift when I was trading stocks or doing that. Like literally I would buy weakness. I would, some people would cough catching a fallen knife. I made a lot of money doing that. So I know what I'm talking about. I know you can make money doing it and that's how you can approach it. Okay. So just to make that very clear, but here's what you want next. You want to see it take out uh, liquidity down into that level. So of course, higher time frame liquidity, you want to see it taken out into that area. All right, <clears throat> so look right here. We have higher time frame sales of liquidity right here. You can see that's a four hour swing low, AKA a higher time frame liquidity pool. You wanna see that liquidity. So wh what does that mean? Well, you have willing sellers right there, fam. Like you have willing sellers right there just waiting to get taken. So you have willing sellers. What do you think you're going to do? If you have willing sellers right there, then that's an area where you can put your limit to buy. Literally down into that liquidity. You have willing sellers. All right, you join, like you're going to go in and you're going to scoop it up at a bargain price. They want to sell, you're going to buy. You're going to buy it from them. 
They're, they're, they're willing to sell it right here. Their orders right there available to you to take right there for the taking. You're going to take it. You're going to buy it from them off that liquidity. Okay. So that's as simple as that. You put your limit right there into that sell side. Okay. And I'm not saying you got to wait on, you could, you could, you could, you know, or you could put your order right at that high and, you know, kind of wait for a deeper, deep, uh, deeper sweep. You're going to miss some plays, but you know, even if you approach it like that and you put your your order at that high, you'll, you'll still get plenty. And that may be an even better to, way to go about do it. I mean, it's just a little bit more aggressive for an entry. Um, and again, the trade off is you'll miss some stuff, but you can get a better entry by doing that. Or you could do it like this and like you just allow for your stop to come down to, to do that. Like allow for your stop, allow enough wheel room for it to come down to trade down into that level though. Like you don't want to have your stop like in this area down at this high, of course. No, you want to allow for it at the very least to come down and test that level. Okay. But I'm going to show you how, how you can go about doing that. So that's, th there's a couple different ways you can go about doing it. I'm not going to force you into a box to do this. You can do it like this. You could do it like that. Uh, but you have willing sellers right there. So you have, um, you can buy it from them, right? So we've concluded so far, you want the old high, all right, if it's a buying scenario, of course, or of, you know, an old low, if it's a, um, if, if it's a shorting scenario, you want the, you want it inside of an imbalance. So you'll have that imbalance as well, which is just further support and you want liquidity. You want to wait for liquidity or you'll be liquidity, right? We always say it. Well, you want that liquidity there. You want to know that there's swollen sellers right there. And you're going to be taking them all right now the next question is you know kind of like where do you take profits though right where do you keep your stop though on something like this so here's i'm gonna tell you how we were approaching it on friday here's how i told you, you could approach it i was talking about this with my mentees on mike on friday and i we outlined this specifically how to play this how you would approach this so the 15 minute right here what do you see this thing's coming down right it's selling off you want to put yourself inside the mind frame of a short who's in this that's trailing their positions because this thing is consistently selling off. So we know there's going to be liquidity residing somewhere. Where's there going to be liquidity residing? Above old highs, of course. Where are shorts going to be trailing positions? Above the most recent high. So look, here's the deal. We understand this thing's selling off into higher time frame sell side, or in, into a higher time frame imbalance with old high support right there. We understand that, you know, this, like it's just it's like slamming into a brick wall basically like all this support and we understand that price is going to move in the direction of least resistance it only has sufficient liquidity it has this imbalance right here it has old high support it has all this stuff that it's coming down into and all i did here was i looked up and said where is the next level of resistance because i understand there's going to be trailing stops above that resistance right there See how it's consistently put in lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. It's bearish market structure, and we understand that. But again, we're trading turtle soups here. We're trading turtle soups, so that's kind of that's part of the deal here. You're looking to run out these stops. You're looking to run out these stops here. Okay, I have stops right there that I want to target. That's my next level of resistance. I want to target that. So here's the deal. That's going to be your profit target. These highs, so you could put your limit right the right there to take profits right there. You put your um to take profits right there and how would you approach it with, with a stop then because like you know somebody be like but i don't got to shift the basis thing off of though so how do i do that well here's how i would approach it because again this is how i did it with stocks back in the day and it's applicable apple ac applicable i think that's a word um to this as well okay do a one-to-one -one. i know some people just can't stand one-to-ones but it's perfect it's absolutely perfect for this type of trading because the thing is it allows for that imperfection. It allows for that wicker room. It allows for it to come down into this old high. And, you know, somebody's like, but, but, but with the one to one, you got to be right, you know, more times than you're wrong. I'm, I'm telling you, fellas, follow these rules. Follow these rules was everything that I just gave you. I'm fairly confident you're going to do just fine. If you're patient enough to wait for these high quality plays, you'll do just fine. Okay. Like, some people are so fixated, like, but I got to be right whether I'm right. I, I can't be, I can't, like, I, you, look, if you do this, this is high probability. This is high probability. If you have the patience to exercise this, you're golden, all right? That one-to-one -one allows for ample wiggle room. And the thing is, if it goes down to that point of one-to-one, -one, you can comfortably say you're incorrect because you're going to be incorrect sometimes. It's part of it. You're not going to be right every single time. You got to accept that. But let's see what that would be right let's just say let's just say you got in at that sell side right because we already talked about how you have willing sellers right here 
and you're going to scoop it up. All right. Or you could wait for this again. I'm not saying you got to do it like this. I'm, I'm saying there's a couple, there's a million ways to skin a cat, right? And let's say your profit target's right there because we've already established that. That's your next buy liquidity pool. That's how you're approaching it. You're going to run out the opposing buy stops, okay? Because you know there's going to be liquidity residing there. And let's just say you, you, do, you do a simple one-to-one, -one, right? So a simple one-to-one -one here. Look at that. Look at all that wiggle room that you got available to let this thing work. Look at all of that. Good enough, right? Look, look at all of that. That it, it allows for it to come down into... Oh, and I forgot to mention. Another key tip, though, if you want the highest probability of deals is to make sure you got an institutional level in there too. I forgot to mention that. You could now you could do all right even without that, but if you want a higher probability, I mean, I'm talking about like the highest probability of deals we're talking about here. You want an institutional level too, which I have a video on that and I'll leave a little I'll leave a video in the um in the description, in the video description a link to that video that I've made on institutional price levels. But in short, they're, they're the 0, 0, the 20, the 50, and the 80 level. So like, look right here, look at my cursor, 80 level or 20 level or 0, 0 level down here. So the thing is like, you can see you got a 20 level in that area right there. Look at that little black box that pops up to the right of my screen. You see that 20 right there? You have a 20 level in that area. So that's another thing that you can do to make a higher probability. You wanna see an institution, major market reversals happen around institutional price levels because big money, Smart money wants to book their orders around these particular areas. Okay. So we have the institutional level down here. We have the higher time frame sales side down here. We have the old high in here. And you're telling me, you're telling me that you're worried about you can't be right more than half the time. With all that stuff, you're telling me you're worried. Come on. Come on now. A one to one, it allows for that imperfection, it allows for ample wiggle room. Okay. And the, also, you're trading with the trend here, which is another thing to make a higher probability trade with overall trend. And there you go. You're not going to get setups left and right. That's the deal. Like when you're talking about the highest probability deals, you're not going to get setups left and right. You got to accept that. But you can get, you know, you'll get setups every week. You get, a, you know, a, a couple setups, really nice setups every single week, though. That's considering that you're trading various pairs, which I do recommend. I know now, let me phrase this as well. Price is fractal, but I'm talking about basing off higher time frame points of interest. You can go down to a lower time frame. And then get more setups on a lower time frame, like say go off a one hour chart for your higher time frame chart, and then do like the you know one minute chart maybe. For, I'm talking about higher time frame in this video, so I do recommend looking at various pairs to get that. All right, I look at all the majors. I look at all the majors, fellas. So it gives you more opportunities. And that's why I'm not a fan of one pair. I know some people they just, they preach it like the gospel: trade one pair, trade one pair. If it works for you, fine. But I'm talking about with this strategy and way of doing things, various pairs is better because it's going to give you more opportunities. Okay, and you're talking about like 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 high high quality, like high quality, right? So the trade off with very high quality is um, now I'm not saying you can't get high quality trades every day, but I'm talking about for this specific strategy. Okay, okay. So that's my advice. That's, that's, that's how I would approach this. What I gave you in this video, it's more than most gurus are going to give you entire courses. More than most will give you an entire course. I gave you a, a fucking gold mine right here. In one video, I gave you a gold mine. You know what most people are going to do, though? It's like, oh, it's, too, it's just too simple. In the back of their head, they thinking it's too simple. I need something more complex and ineffective. That should have struck my ego because it can't be this simple. I gave you a way to be rich in this video. In one fucking YouTube video. I gave you a way that you could get rich, but most people aren't going to act on it. They're going to jump to the new. They're going to jump to the next video. Or look for a little magic thing over here. A little magic thing over here. They'll stay in that hamster wheel of doing fucking nothing. But you know, of course, there's that small minority that'll actually take action and they'll make money with it. Okay, you don't need complicated stuff. Like simple works. It's just. And then this is why this is where psychology comes into play, and then why most people don't succeed is because they're not patient. They don't have the patience to wait for it, do they? Nope, they don't. Most people don't. You need to, cultiv you need to cultivate that patience. You need to cultivate that discipline because that's, what that's what's going to take you to the finish line. Like I can, like I can, uh, I can, t I can tell you this. Like I just showed you a working model that you could act upon, but then, you know, the discipline, the patience, all that stuff, it's, a, it's another story. And I can give you tools to develop the discipline, which I've done on this channel. I mean, check out my psychology playlist. I've, I've given you tools for the psychology part of things. Okay. That's what's going to take you to the finish line. But there's the model. More effective than, you know, 99.9% .9 of the stuff that the gurus that you see spouting out here, right there in one video. 
So I hope you enjoyed. And if you did get immense value, you know, why not leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and maybe I'll give you some more info here a little bit later. All right.